Welcome back to yet another game here on Arabia. In the green, we have Hong Shuang, who is playing as the Mongols. I'm 90% sure that's not how it's pronounced. So, of course, you can listen to me massacre some names for this video, and you can leave descriptions in the comment of how they're actually meant to be pronounced. That way, if I ever come across these players again, I will get it right, which is always nice. And he's being spectated by CKF Jeffrey, who we all know is pretty decent by now. So... In the blue, we have 4 high, 3 SB, so I'm probably just going to call him SB for the rest of the game. Again, there's probably something that's meant to be there, but I'm not seeing it at the moment. So, of course, if you can see something, leave it in the comments. He will also be playing as a Mongol, so we've got a Mongol war here on Arabia, which is nice. So, let's have a look at the nice starting positions I've got. I actually wouldn't say nice, just looking at it quickly. Berries there are along these trees, which is shocking, because it means there's going to be a real little surface area there. However, it shouldn't be too bad if he plants the mill, like, right there there. I don't know, it depends how it's really going to go out. He does have a back gold and a back stone though, which is quite nice, and he will be able to actually wall that off if he wants to. Straight across here, across here, back across here, and then he's only got this front area to worry about, so it's not really too bad. The other gold as well, not too bad. It looks like we're actually seeing some scout damage here, and I'm interested to see if someone's actually going... Oh. Uh, nearly. Nearly, nearly, nearly. Anyway, the front gold, it's not in the worst position possible, but still, it's not the best. This wood as well, it's going to be able to take arch damage from this side after they get a few of those range upgrades with the crossbows. So, it could be no noteworthy mentioning that. And let's go check on uh, Hong Shuang. Down over here, we have the Ford Gold in this crater-like area, which everyone hates as soon as they log into Arabia map. They know that they're not going to have quite so much fun. And the berries are decent, they're in the back there. Stone in the back as well, so we could actually go and try and drop a faster castle. Because of course with Mongols, you can get out that Mangadai really quickly, which is a really devastating unit. Definitely one of the best elite units in the game. Over here, gold towards the side, and his area, it is actually really open if we look at it. He has pretty much no way really to wall this off. It's going to be a difficult uphill battle. Uh... That's actually a really bad pun. But still, it's going to be a difficult battle for him to hold off, especially if his opponent forwards up on this area over here, if we get a tower up here or something, or if there's a forward done here and we get a tower. However, we can say that Hong Shuang has actually opted to go for the deers, which is interesting. So we could see a drush or a fast castle out of him, which is interesting, because, of course, they are playing as Mongols, so they do get that uh, bonus from uh, wild animals, so not sheep, but boars, deer, anything like that, so that's always a bonus. Over here, are you deciding to go for your deer patch? Have we actually seen your deer patch? It's on the other side over here, so it's not the best location in the world, but it's definitely not the worst. And it looks like right now, Hong is going to find out that, well, uh, SB is walling, which is something really nice to know. Only one HP left on that scout, and actually losing it there, that might cost him a bit of exploration. Let's actually have a look. Uh, and there is the advance. I'm just going to pause things quickly so we can just have a, a nice look around. So, spectating uh, 3SB right now. Pretty good exploration. He knows where his opponent is. He knows where most of his resources are. He should be pretty happy. He's walled himself in. All good. Schwang, uh, pretty much the same amount of scouting, actually. So it doesn't look too bad. It looks like he's actually going for the wall off here, which is kind of interesting because, like I said, it's something that's... Uh, like, it's a really hard area to wall off, and it means dedicating a lot of village gathering time to it. So it looks like we are seeing the stable, so of course we are going to see that great Mongolian scout rush, which we all know and love, of course, because they do have a food gathering bonus, and when they level up to light cavalry, they gain extra hit points. What's not to love? Uh, looks like there is a bit of a wall off going on in the front as well here, and both players will be going for that scout rush, but there are spears already out for Shuang. Are we seeing spears for you yet? No, it looks like he's going to be pretty happy with his wall off, hoping that nothing gets in, which it's, it's fair, and we did actually just hear a quick pop block there for Shang. But nothing uh, too bad, and the wall off here is actually going down quite well. This side over here looks like it's going to be done. Uh, the front area here looks like it's going to be done as well. Neither player taking stone yet, so it doesn't look like we're going to see a fast castle drop or anything from anyone. And I don't think we're going to see any ridiculous feudal ages as well. Quite a few th farms being thrown up by SB, nothing too ridiculous. And all the scouts seem to be just hanging out at the moment, nothing too ridiculous. Deer patch over here, again for Shuang, so he's really starting to exploit that bonus that he gets with the deer. There is a spear out here, which is fair enough. Of course, that'll deter about... If three spears come in, that'll probably be... Not three spears. Three scouts, that'll probably be enough to hold them off, but... 
any more than that, and you could be in trouble. And there we go anyway. So he's realized that the scout numbers could be getting kind of high, and he's moving them out, which is perfect timing, because he would have lost those villagers over there. Uh, of course, these scouts could have come in and tried to get there as well, but nothing too ridiculous happening here. And it uh, looks like SB does have a few more scouts out in play here. Just a few, mostly because of the fact he's still got that one that was injured. But uh, no major upgrades on them yet. No bloodlines for anyone. No uh, forging. No armor. So nothing ridiculous. We can see right now, though, SB is going in for that archery range, well, changeover, which will be extremely helpful. And it doesn't look like uh, Schwang actually wants to go for that yet. He might even be... Want to check first? No, he's not going for a fast castle type of thing. So he's definitely going to have to get those ranges up kind of soon if he wants to. And there we go, blacksmith. And what's the plan now? Ranges, or is he going to go up? Because this could be interesting if he decides to up. It looks like this house here taking quite a bit of damage. It will have to be repaired soon because they actually will be able to get in. Looks like though, SB would have been able to win on the high ground there. Well, get the attack bonus. Not necessarily win, but there we go again. Schwang being pushed out of there, trying to uh, keep on out of his opponent while he's in the high ground. Because as we do know, 25% bonus attacking downhill, 25% penalty attacking uphill. So it's a really big difference between the attacking. Uh, again, we are seeing quite a few scouts actually out for Schwang right now, which is really interesting. Going for Bloodlines. Hasn't even migrated over into that Archer area yet, which is kind of interesting because that could be really dangerous. Another archery range, so going up to three white now for SB, which is quite a few to have out. Uh, especially considering he knows he's going up against so many scouts. Actually, 65 HP on these now. 65 on uh, SBs as well, so he's not that far in front right now. These spears as well are going to be able to add like a really, really big amount of damage. So that should be really helpful. Uh, archery range is, of course, going to be constantly producing. He does have enough villagers on there to be doing that. I think the rule of thumb is about four per archery range, and he should be all right. Uh, looking back over here, still no archery range transition, which is really interesting, and I'm trying to figure out what both players are doing right now. I don't think we're going to see an up, actually, so let's speed things back up while we're waiting, because he's only got scouts to defend this, and if these archers start to get in there, they're going to be able to start dealing out a lot of damage, but uh, like we said, it's going to come down to these scouts and how well they engage. Uh, of course, these spears here will be able to really do a lot of damage, so if he can lure those scouts into those spears, uh, it could be really potentially bad, and they're in. It looks like he's going to get quite a few hits, actually. And it looks like he's trying to engage here. Losing one. Looks like one, one. We've got a fairly even trade-off there, and might actually lose a second one here. No, it looks like it's going to get out of there without too much hassle. We have seen the armor upgrade on them. So they do have that plus one now, which is really important for taking out archers. And again, is he going for it? He's going for it. The spearmen are out of position. The spearmen are coming back in. And looks like that's, these spearmen might be enough to actually change this. Could be really bad for Hong Shuang right now. And those spearmen, they, they just put out so much damage against scouts, you've got to be really careful. You've got to either pick them off first, or not engage, really, because like we can see, it was pretty even going into the fight, but coming out of it right now, as we can see, lost everything to that 300 point lead right now to SB. Great play by him, we actually see Jeffrey there, I wish I knew what he was saying right now. And it looks like over here as well, I don't know, because Schwang might not be able to hold this off, because if these archers come up here, they should be able to stop this tower, but 96%, I don't think they're going to be able to stop it, no, there we go, I don't think he saw that one coming, so that tower should be enough to hold it off for a while now, we'll lose a few spears, both of them actually, so that's going to be good for Schwang if he decides to engage, but I'm really looking at the economy and just trying to see what he's trying to do, because he hasn't fast castled or anything, he looks like he's going to be going up to castle, but he's got no archery ranges out, all he's got is this one stable, so unless he goes for knights, there's not going to be really a lot he can do, he's starting to just bludgeon away at this fence over here, and it looks like he will be able to hold this off again, yep, the scouts of course forced to retreat, quite a few archers are actually out for SB right now, castle age is on the way for Hong Shuang, uh, but SB is already on his way up as well. So showing just how good of an economy he has, of course, making scouts really does slow down your castle time because they do cost 80 food each, which is quite a bit. 
when you think about it, considering you only need 800 to advance up to the oh. castle age. These spears here, if they can get it in, it looks like they will be taken out before they manage to get a hit off, which is good, you know, it's proof you're really watching what's going on. And it looks like we do see some scouts moving out across the map right now for Shuang. He might be able to get a little bit of harassment here. His archers might just be able to deal with it. Village arch combination should be able to. Uh, it shouldn't be too bad for them. Of course, that armor upgrade is going to make it a little bit harder, and this villager over here might actually lose his life. Uh, yeah, he's going to go. I don't think we should see another one get lost, though. Should be picked off fairly easy. Saying that, though, we do see SB is in Schwang's base right now. He has managed to pick off one, two villagers. These archers are going to prove extremely dangerous in this situation. And I don't think that Schwang has a direct counter for them at all. He's going for a second stable, so he hasn't got any skirmishes out. Knights should be able to deal with it just as effectively, but still going to be a bit extra cost there. And we are seeing the third stable go up over here. So that's the third one there. Will be kind of interesting to see how he decides to try and play this one. And it looks like, again, these villagers here all in trouble. SB advancing up right now, so we will see that crossbow upgrade, which is just absolutely great to have because of the range. There we go. And swapping into cavalry archers as well as Mongols. That's an interesting one. Not something you usually see a lot of. Actually, uh, if they don't have a castle up, you actually see a lot of it. So take that one back. If the castle's up, generally it goes straight into Mangadai. If they don't, they generally go for, uh, yeah, cavalry archers. That actually sounds right. Just me not used to seeing cavalry archers as played by any civ except Huns. These archers here are going to prove extremely dangerous when I go past this big line of villagers here. That village there might... Yeah, doing quite well actually surviving that. Definitely tough villager. But again, these knights, they're going to have a lot of trouble getting in here because... Like we say, knights do do well against archers, skirmishes, crossbows, uh, arbalest, anything like that. But once they're outnumbered to a stage... It gets really bad because they just cannot get in and do the amount of damage they want to. So, gonna be interesting to see how this one's actually played out. And SB definitely looking like he has a massive lead right now. 500 points, actually, if you want to be really good about it. Second town center going up for him as well. Only a second up for Schwang right now, which is gonna prove kinda hard to keep up with. Because he is behind in score right now, and when you're behind like this, you really need to figure out something to do. Because. We know that at this stage you're behind, you need to do something to change it, you just can't out-boom at this stage. The cavalry archers here are getting taken out, so he is getting a small victory there, but more just coming out across the map, because his economy is pretty good, honestly. Speeding things back along, it looks like losing quite a few more villages actually as well, his crossbow is proving extremely deadly. Uh, Knights at the moment, he should have enough to try and deal with this force down here, it's going to come down to it, if he gets up onto this hill, it could be a different story, but, alright, here we go, this is going to be make or break time, really. Losing one, two, deleting that lumber camp, smart play, deleting that one as well. Losing three, four, five to no, well nearly five, should have been five if you had ballistics, but there we go. Five, well four knights lost to no archers, which is interesting because knights are meant to be able to counter archers quite well. They've even got the 2 plus 2 armor on them and bloodlines. But like I said, if you outmass really badly, there's not a lot you can do. These are cavalry archers as well. Going to prove just being an utter pain in the neck right now. Going to be able to come in here, raid this, raid this, raid everything until they're done. Shuang, uh, he's got the manganella out, of course, because that is the direct counter to any large group of well, crossbows, skirmishes, anything like that, cavalry archers, uh, to a point with cavalry archers, of course. And of course, using this hill advantage here as well. Knights, no, not going for it. This Manganel might prove damaging, though. Could definitely give him exactly what he needs if he gets one good hit, and no. Might get this one. Got some damage, but again, up on this hill, uh, the... He is actually getting caught downhill here. This might be enough to actually break the crossbows. This could be interesting. If he moves up to here... Oh, it's, it's close. He's going to come down to his targeting as well, losing another one there. I think the knights might just be able to deal with this one. Saying that though, they are actually kind of damaged. I didn't notice how damaged they were. Uh, yeah, the crossbows will be able to actually pick this one off quite easily, considering the amount of damage that was on them. If they were fresh knights, might have been a different story. Hill advantage as well over here was a great choice of engagement. 
And it looks like this Manganel coming in again. Going to try and get that big hit there just to knock out all of these crossbows. Uh, it's starting to look like GG. It's 900 points already. Uh, saying that though, he's picking off the rest of these archers, which is nice. But it's still 700 points, and the Cavalry Archer lead is definitely out to SB right now, which is going to be really hard to try and deal with. Especially with Knights, he does have two Manganels out, which will be good for that. But I still can't see it being extremely well done. Uh, it's going to take a lot to get back into this game. He's going to have to get in there with some really good harassment, and I just don't think that's possible at the moment. It's too well walled off. We even see a fourth town center going up for SB right now. Uh, it's starting to prove really, really hard, actually, for him to deal with right now. So again, just going to get some Cavalry Archer damage in here. Uh, probably these Gold Miners over here will be a good target. Naturally, Stone Miners over here as well. Uh, not picking anything off, so that's kind of good. Uh, yeah, Swang definitely starting to play a bit smarter. Uh, losing quite a bit of... Well, not quite a bit. Losing one Cavalry Archer. Losing a few on HP. Nothing too big really to worry about. Manganel hits are always damaging because, of course, they do do that splash damage, which is really annoying to try and deal with because it just gives you that little bit less HP, which means if you go head-to-head -head with another full army of Cavalry Archers, you're going to lose it, which isn't nice. 1,100 points currently for SB. We, should ch we could actually see the GG any time now. The harassment by SB has been absolutely great in this game. Losing another villager, potentially one more as well. Nothing too big there. Cavalry Archers again, pushing out across the map. Going to be able to hang out with this Siege Workshop here. And the Ford Siege Workshop, we know what that means. There is going to be a big push from SB right now, which can be really damaging. These villages over here have actually been lost to Cavalry Archers again, which isn't the nicest thing in the world, because of course, when you're out that far, there's nothing you can do about it. Cavalry Archers come in, and it's GG villages right there. Uh, currently still even higher in front of the score. The Battering Ram is out, and I'm expecting to see the GG anytime soon now. Manganels, of course, going to be able to come up here and try and deal with it. The castle is up, which is interesting. Going to be able to do a bit of damage with that and defend this area quite quite well. Mangadai are out as well. But again, once I get into the economy over here, it's going to be really hard to deal with. Especially because he's got these battering rams. We'll actually be able to take out the town centers. Losing quite a few cavalry archers to these Manganels, actually, which could be damaging. Coming back into range of this uh, castle, which means it's going to be forced to pull back. Which is going to be quite smart. But, of course, they can be taken out, as we have seen. And the battering rams are really starting to work away at this. I uh, wouldn't be surprised, actually, to see the SB actually start going Imperial soon. Yes, there we go, right on it. That was actually a great call, I will say it myself. Cavalry Archers on this side as well, really hurting this economy line, like we can see here. We can see one, two, three, four, five villagers picked off there. And combined a lot, the villager harassment in this game has actually been nuts by SB. He's done a great job holding it off. These battering rams are really starting to do the damage, and as soon as he hits Imperial, we might even see the GG from Schwang, just because he's hit Imperial, and I don't think Schwang's going to be anywhere near. No, he's not. He's going to be a long way away. And here come the Knights of Mangadai here. They might actually be able to deal with this force, but again, it's going to come down to well, how well these Cavalry Archers engage. It looks like he will lose uh, the battering rams here to the Knights. But again, there are definitely more on the way from this. Nothing you can really do to stop it at this stage. This is going to be a real big push from SB in Imperial. And until then, well, Jeffrey's team, Jeffrey Schwang, they can kind of just try and build up their economy. But apart from that, not a lot. Actually, 25 HP left on this town center. He needs to snipe it with the Cavalry Archers. That would be really nice if he actually just did that. Come on, just run in and snipe it with the Cavalry Archers. You can do it. Or you can just try and fight the knights and die. Up to you, of course. Up to you. Cavalry Archers over here. We'll be able to start picking away at these units quite soon. Castle is going up here as well, which is going to be quite helpful. And Cavalry Archers here are boxing themselves in. Which is a nice touch, because of course the knights get less surface area and the Cavalry Archers can still hurt. But nothing too big. 1,200 points in the lead currently for SB. 38 minutes into the game. And he's actually about to hit Imperial too, so this could be really, really troubling. Castle is going up on the front, which means we can see trebuchets, and of course, trebuchets, as we know, are pretty much the game enders uh, in Imperial Age, because, well, Ooh, you can't run into the difference to try and get... You can't run in to try and kill them off, because your opponent just hammers you down way too easily. Mangadai are out. Uh, all the upgrades, of course, on the way. We get Bracer now. It's going to pretty much be over. As soon as this trebuchet comes out as well, it could even force the GG from that. Let's have a look. Where's that smith? Have you already done Bracer? Yes, Bracer's already been done, that's why. That was quick. Anyway, Trebuchet coming out. There we go, and it's going to no doubt take that castle down quite easily right now. 
over this side of the map here. We do see these cavalry archers are under attack by these knights. But again, it should be something you can deal with at this stage. He's really hammering the damage onto his opponent right now. And of course, these cavalry archers over here, it looks like they might actually be able to hold this one off. They are all extremely low HP'd, but they are in mass and they are in a nice position. So they should be able to do quite well against this. Another town center going up on the gold over here. We can see that just every town center is going up right now for SP. Castle over here, he knows he can't hold off from this trebuchet. So there we go, something a little bit different, a Mongol war in Arabia. Not that different from Hun Wars, honestly, because of the cavalry archers. But anyway, thanks for watching, I hope my voice has annoyed you, because it's actually been really bad the last day. So, I'll see you